wildfires are burning hotter and fire season is getting longer, bringing unhealthy smoky air to the Pacific Northwest more regularly. I'm Erica Zuko with our Environment Northwest team. Each week we share reports on what's happening in the natural world around us and how it impacts people in our region. Let's dig into the health impacts of wildfire smoke and how you can protect your family this summer. You don't really need a fancy study to know the Northwest is dealing with more smoke these days. We've all felt it. You can almost feel it as you breathe in and it's just, it's got a little bit of a burn to it. It doesn't feel any better indoors than it does outdoors right now. At Overlake Medical Center in Bellevue, Washington, it's meant more calls for doctors and nurse practitioners seeing patients with asthma, COPD, and related illnesses, like Tyler Cook. That's probably one of our busiest times now. Mm -hmm. uh, I've noticed this the last couple of years as, you know, we do see a lot of patients in our clinic with chronic lung issues like asthma and COPD. His patients should be seeing the benefits of cleaner air, thanks to the Environmental Protection Agency's regulations on emissions over the years. But a new study from the University of Iowa says wildfires have erased two decades worth of air quality gains in our region. This graphic shows in red areas with the worst black carbon pollution. Parts of Washington, Oregon and Idaho are all on the list. It's an especially dangerous kind of pollution because these particles are so small they can travel deep into the lungs and may even enter the bloodstream. We might not see it. Um, you know, we can't see these tiny little particles. We can certainly see when there's smoke in the air, uh, but really the impact uh, that air quality has on your lungs. Utah Bothell air quality expert Dan Jaffe says the only real way to prevent smoke is to prevent fires. It's a combination of factors, of fuel buildup, of climate change, which dries out the fuels, and then people being in the forest. But there are things you can do to prepare yourself for the season to come. Jaffe and Cook both recommend air purifiers or a homemade device with a box fan and filter. It's best to put one in each room and prepare before smoke season starts. The air that we breathe, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's paramount to us surviving. Everything you'll see in the literature is calling for more research into this. Dr. John Mignone is a cardiologist at Swedish Health specializing in heart failure treatment. He knows the impacts when wildfire smoke clogs our skies. We definitely do see higher levels of heart attack at that time. Unhealthy air doesn't only affect the lungs, it can be dangerous for the cardiovascular system. For people with existing pulmonary disease, it can even lead to heart failure and stroke. You have both chemical and fine matter particles that get all the way down into the deepest areas of our lungs and they could sit there and cause oxidative stress. Those are some of the short term impacts, but could a persistent seasonal onset of wildfire smoke in our atmosphere affect us in the long run? We don't have a complete picture of exactly how wildfire smoke will impact our health, but we are seeing a lot more um, evidence that's suggesting that people who consider themselves to be young and healthy may actually be at higher risk than they previously were perceived to be. Addison Houston is a climate adaptation strategist for Public Health Seattle and King County and says more research is needed. The focus, he says, should be understanding those really small particles in wildfire smoke that measure smaller than PM 2.5. Which is very fine particulate matter that has a diameter about 20 times narrower than the width of a human hair. Wildfire smoke particles can include chemicals, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, and other volatile organic compounds. All these things can cause free radical damage to the DNA. So, so this, is, this is at least what we know about smoking. Dr. Mignone says that could lead to worsened lung function, but more research needs to look at which particles from smoke could lead to those long-term impacts. If there's a particular particulate matter that we could determine is the biggest offender, that's something. But there are very sparse amounts of data about that. But as destructive as wildfires are, the smoke they produce can have even more far-reaching effects. Wildfire smoke pollution can travel hundreds, even thousands of miles, impacting the air quality for millions. Unhealthy air can have significant effects on people's lives and health. The main component of wildfire smoke is soot particles from burning plant fiber. These particles are tiny, about 30 times smaller than the width of a human hair and smaller than a red blood cell. Other common particle pollutants like dust and pollen are much larger. 
When they're inhaled, most of these particles are trapped in your nose and sinuses and don't make it into your lungs. But wildfire smoke particles are so tiny that when you breathe them, they escape your body's defenses and penetrate deep into your lungs and even into your bloodstream. Once inside your body, they can make you cough, cause shortness of breath, and cause headaches. Wildfire smoke particles can make existing heart and lung conditions worse. Because of the risk to people when wildfire smoke is dense, the Environmental Protection Agency has developed an air quality scale that measures how hazardous wood smoke pollution may be. It's called the Air Quality Index, or AQI. AQI is designed so the greater the index, the greater the risk to your health. For wood smoke, the scale runs from 0 to 500. Less than 50 AQI is considered acceptable and poses little or no risk. AQI values of 50 to 100 are generally not hazardous to healthy people. As the AQI increases, though, to each level, the possible health impacts increase, especially for people with underlying health problems. Air quality agencies monitor the level of particle pollution to determine the current AQI. They also use computer models to predict where the smoke will go and how thick it will be. They can predict what the AQI will be today, tomorrow, and beyond. This can let you plan your activities just like a weather forecast. If you don't have one of those fancy indoor air filters, you can make one for about $20. All you need is one of these furnace air filters you'd get from the hardware store, and then just a regular box fan. When you go to buy one of these, look for one of two things, either MERV 13 or FPR 10. These are pretty much the best indoor air filters that you can buy. They will scrub the most particles out of the air. It costs about $20 for one of these. What you'll do is take your box fan, line up the air filter behind the box fan, and then just use some regular tape, any kind of tape works, to attach the filter to the back of the box fan. And if it doesn't fit perfectly, if there are, like on this one, a few gaps along there, they say that's okay. It'll still be very effective even if it's not a perfect fit. You take this, you put it inside an enclosed room. A smaller room is best. Make sure the windows and doors are closed and then just turn it on. It's pulling dirty air through this side and pushing much cleaner air out the front. The experts at Puget Sound Clean Air did some tests with this setup and you can see there where they turned on the fan, the levels of black carbon dropped significantly and continued dropping for hours. They did those tests during a summer wildfire season when there was a lot of smoke in the air. This is a before and after photo. The filter on the left, you can see just how dirty it is after it's been scrubbing the air compared to the new filter on the right. This is something you can put together very quickly and once it's all set up and turned on, you should notice some relief within hours. You may not see anything wrong along these vines. Each Chardonnay grape feels and smells plump and healthy. And at the far end, on the left side, you can see the smoke coming out of the tubes. But the smoke Tom Collins and his team pump continuously into this hoop house will likely leave a bad taste in your glass once it's turned to wine. When, when you have these smoke affected wines, it can result in wines that we just can't sell. Badly Collins spent decades in the business of winemaking before joining Washington State University. He learned firsthand about a problem costing West Coast winemakers millions. So is it impacting the grapes themselves or more so the vines? Uh, both. As the West Coast battles larger, more severe wildfires, wind transports thick, pungent smoke for miles. So we have definitely seen not just here in Washington, but also in Oregon, California, British Columbia, you know, Every year, somewhere up and down the West Coast, there are vineyards that are affected by smoke. When smoke envelops vines, compounds called volatile phenols, which cause the smell, seep into leaves and grapes. The compounds climb into the grape skin cells and bind with sugars. So they're in the skin cells, and at that point, you really can't wash them off. It's already inside the berry. Collins and his team smoke half of these grapes around the clock and leave another set alone. They pick samples every few hours, then freeze them for a team in Pullman to study what genes are turned on by smoke and what happens when they're pressed for wine. They're also trying preventative sprays on the fruit to give growers an option when they know smoke is coming. We have shown that the materials we're applying 
could result in about a 50% reduction in the amount of smoke compounds that end up in the fruit. The USDA and state wine commissions have poured in more than $7 million to teams in Washington, California, and Oregon, all hoping to solve a growing issue with a sour bottom line. We're seeing losses of fruit, losses of wine related to smoke exposure events. Not widespread every year, but there'll be enough instances that it's worth studying to try and reduce the amount of losses to these smoke events. A problem made more pressing as late season wildfires bake the scent of smoke into recent memory with more expected in the years to come. For more environmental stories, text environment to the number on your screen 206-448-4545 and we'll send you a link. For Environment Northwest, I'm Erica Zuko. Thanks for watching.